Hey there, Danelle Jones from Tribe Leadership Retreats, and today I wanted to give you a quick soundbite on technical debt. So you may or may not have come across this term before. If you haven't, that's okay. It's probably one that you're going to hear bandied around a fair amount. Um, and I thought it was worth talking about today because given the amount of change that's going on today in our environment, uh, the pivoting that our organizations are having to do post global pandemic or in some cases still in the middle of global pandemic uh, is pretty phenomenal. And so whilst we're going through these changes and, um, and this time of a lot of change, what it means is that we're making decisions and we're making those decisions quickly, um, usually under pressure. And it's really important that we understand some of the implications that we're going to have uh, on the longer term uh, vision or strategy for both our technology, but also for our businesses. So technical debt is this concept of um, the idea that uh, if you're building software, you have multiple choices around how you might solve a problem. And technical debt is the stuff that accrues and kind of hangs around as you build on top of your existing technologies and don't necessarily take the time to sort of clear things out. Um, it happens when we make decisions in a hurry. Maybe we've got to push to get something out into market really quickly. Um, or alternatively, it can happen sometimes if we're on an existing technology platform and we just kind of have to keep building in that way. And, and it's, it's maybe a case of lots of workarounds and those sorts of things. So technical debt is that baggage that we start to pick up and we start to accrue as we build forward and as we incrementally deliver software. Uh, and so it comes about for a number of reasons. As I said, it could be that situation where we've just got to get something out the door, we've just got to get it to market. And so we make some decisions around maybe not going through and doing the due diligence to refactor the code that we need to and we um, potentially build on top of something that's not great, but it's, it's what it is today and we're going to build on top and keep going. We're not necessarily here to go back and to relook at the whole way that we do things. So it can happen for that reason. Uh, it can happen when we are trying to add on to new, onto old existing platforms uh, that are very complex. And the ultimate result is that as we're building technologies, we're accruing this extra complexity and this extra baggage and this extra burden around the way of doing things. But it's not just for technical programs. We can also accrue this type of debt, this type of process debt in our organizations. How many times have you had an example where somebody said, hey, we're just going to put this system in, we've got to put in a little bit of a workaround, or there's a bit of stuff that has to happen on paper. And then five years down the track, that person, instead of having one person that was doing that on paper workaround, is now managing a team of people that are still doing that on paper workaround. So this idea of collecting baggage, whether it be process baggage or technical baggage, um, it, it can happen anywhere in our organization. And as I said, it's particularly important to be thinking about this today because we're in an environment that's asking a lot of us, that we're making a lot of change very quickly, and we're making decisions regularly, we're acting in a hurry, um, and in some cases, some of those decisions might be made um, not necessarily with the full awareness and knowledge um, or the full due diligence that we might be afforded if we had more time to make these changes. So technical debt can happen for any number of reasons. Uh, but I think the, the key thing really is to be aware of it. So if you have this, this debt and this baggage accruing and um, you're unaware of it, that's probably more dangerous than at least being aware of it, knowing that you're making a decision and putting a peg in the ground to say, hey, we're going to actually come back and look at that. Because it, at that point, you're acknowledging it's a deliberate strategy for any number of reasons, but it's a deliberate strategy to take a bit of a shortcut now that we know is going to add complexity and over the long term start to eat into our productivity. It's this idea of death by a thousand cuts. So my one word of caution for you is that as you're moving quickly, as you're going through uh, the this change in your environment over the next few weeks, months and years, 
make sure that you're keeping aware of when you're taking these decisions to have shortcuts, when you are going back and actually looking at the whole process end to end and redoing from scratch, uh, because at least that way, you know that if you're making these decisions and you've got these workarounds happening and your technical team are potentially building software that's just incrementing on what you've got, at least you know that you've got a stake in the ground to come back to it at a later date. You can come back and look at it end to end and refactor all over again. So that's technical debt. Uh, if you want to delve more deeply into it, Martin Fowler does a whole bunch of work that I really, really love. So I'm going to drop a link to his article on technical debt at the bottom of this blog post and that'll be a great place to get you started and to start that journey and, and delving into all of the good nerdy stuff. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful day uh, and we'll see you next week.